Hey, Bastard Spear for 64K, and welcome to another episode of Top Tens. And welcome back. So today is a little bit of a first for me. I haven't ever done any handheld top tens yet and I decided I'll just do my favorite one. Why not? Just go for it. <laughs> so this is my personal favorite top 10 games for the Neo Geo Pocket Color. Yeah, so this system wasn't really around for very long. It came out in 1999 and was discontinued by 2001 when SNK went bankrupt. This is the successor to the Neo Geo Pocket, the black and white version. This color version came out in 99. It's very light, it's really slick, excellent analog pad and buttons, I love it. It's really nice and small, there's a cartridge slot over here, got a metal slug in there. It's an excellent little system, I absolutely love it. The games that they were able to bring out on this thing are just brilliant. There weren't a lot, that's why I decided to make a top 10 of just the entire list of games that I love. To me this system has always been like the dream cast of handhelds, you know what I mean? It's uh, It came out only lasted a couple of years but the games and the quality of stuff that came out for it were just such top-notch stuff. So let's not waste any more time and let's start that countdown. We have Evolution Eternal Dungeons which is one of the rare, very few RPGs on the system and is an excellent port of the Dreamcast game with a few changes here and there like the graphics now going from 3D to 2D. If you like dungeon crawlers and traditional turn-based fighting, this is a pretty fun and well implemented game. Interaction with characters is pretty charming and the story is well done and is a completely different translation than a Dreamcast version. You basically search for treasure, sell stuff and pay off your family's debts. There's more to it than that but it's simple and works well in the handheld format. Music is nice and cheerful and the graphics are pretty good and detailed, even though some of the dungeons and ruins start looking all the same after a while. Sting made a pretty good RPG yeah, that's really enjoyable in short bursts and is a must-have game on the system. is Neo Turf Masters by SNK which is a must-have sports game on the system and is essentially a miniaturized version of the arcade of the same name. You can choose between six different characters all with their own skills and weaknesses and three different courses which is a lot to jam into this little game. The excellent graphic style from the arcade have been translated brilliantly. The music and sound effects are equally as charming. The most important factor, the gameplay, is fully intact and plays really well as a handheld game. There is a lot of addictive content on this little package and even if you don't like golf games I highly suggest you give it a go. Chances are you're gonna be a Neo Turf addict within minutes. Number eight. We got King of the Fighters R2 by SNK which is the full color sequel to the previous black and white release. Again we have a miniaturized version of the arcade game series on the go and boy is it fun. You can play either single versus or team modes which incorporates characters from various SNK series like Fatal Fury and the Art of Fighting. The story mode has you fighting your way to Rugal, who for whatever relevant reason is making clones of many of the fighters. This is probably the fastest game of all the fighting games on the system and the matches play out at a feverish pace. Graphics are big and bold and are animated pretty well and most of the moves are present, even some of the specials which is a lot to cram in. Music and sound effects are good and the analog stick on the pocket really makes fighting games a dream to play on the system and luckily there are a lot to choose from. The ease of the gameplay and the Foss Pace make this an addictive game at number 8. We have Biomoto Unitron by Yumi Kobo, which is another dungeon crawling RPG in the Pokemon vein and was the first RPG release for the system. The game plays out much like Evolution which we looked at earlier with a hub town and shops and people to talk to and it's surrounded by dungeons which level up your character 
and the money you earn is used to upgrade your Unitron, which is your robot partner in the game. The battles are done in the traditional Pokemon sense with regular hits and special moves playing it out in the addictive turn-based style. The graphics are well done, chunky and colourful, with good music and sound effects complementing the whole package. Due to the Pocket's demise in the West, we never got to see the sequel, which was released in 2000, in Japan only, which is a real shame. This is the only other traditional English RPG on the system, and is a must-play on the Pocket. Is Neo Geo Cup 98, which is a soccer game by SNK that came out in 1999. It's a game of pocket-sized version of the arcade game, The Road to Victory, and is an addictive game. It was the first one I ever played on the system, and pretty much made me run out and buy Pocket straight after playing it. It has all the usual modes, exhibition, two player versus, but the career mode is quite excellent, where you play your way through the Neo Geo Cup. Gameplay is perfect, and the game flows and moves really well, which makes each match a treat to play. Big fast graphics graphics and great sound effects and music round out a game that I would never have thought would be so much fun. Sports games are usually not my thing, but for whatever reason Neo Geo ones are just really addictive and hard to put down, just like this little gem. Is Sonic the Hedgehog Pocket Adventure developed by SNK and overseen by Yuji Naka and his Sonic team? This is by far the best platform game on the system and is a brilliant remix of sorts of Sonic 2 with bits and pieces of elements from other 16-bit Sonic games. The graphics move at a blistering pace and the chaos and speed of its 16-bit Big Brothers feels fully intact. Awesome musical renditions of various Sonic tunes are excellently portrayed in this fun little adventure. It's pretty easy compared to other Sonics, but that's okay because the quality of the entire game is really high. It's a must play. We have Fasilay by Sacknoth, which is a turn-based mech strategy game similar in style to Squaresoft's front mission games on the PS1. Sacknoth, the developers, went on to make the excellent Shadow Hearts series of RPGs on the PS2, so you know this was a real hidden gem on the system. In the game, you play as a group of mercenaries with mechs who get hired to bring down a whole country. This game is turn-based, but what's unique is that you plan out multiple turns in one go. So moving, setting yourself up, shooting and getting into position for the retaliation has to all be considered before starting your move. I love it. It works excellently and I wish more turn-based strategy games would take this approach as it makes this handheld game move at a pretty quick pace which is perfect for the system it's on. Great graphics and presentation, especially with all the info on screen and good sound effects round out the best strategy game the Pocket ever saw. Is Metal Slug's second mission, and that's the sequel to the excellent first game that came out a year earlier by SNK. If you never played a slug game, it's basically a run and gun gamer's dream, and second mission does not disappoint. Everything that makes the arcade counterparts is here. Saving hostages, run and gun madness, tanks, jet fighting shoot em up action, and giant boss battles. The graphics are top notch, and the game runs at a steady brisk pace, even with all the destruction on screen. Great music and sound effects complement an overall excellent package. That is for me just a little bit better than the first one. Number two. We have SNK vs Capcom Match of the Millennium, developed by Dimps and released by SNK in 1999. Wow, this is an amazing game that, like the Dreamcast version, is a fan service dream combining both SNK and Capcom characters into the best versus fighting game on the system. And that's saying a lot, because the competition for the genre on the pocket is pretty damn steep. They even had to use an upgraded 32 meg cart to get it all on. The game features your usual one on one or team versus modes with 26 characters to choose from, that includes the hidden characters, and various styles to fight in as well. The gameplay is excellent with precise controls and smooth flowing gameplay that replicates the Dreamcast and arcades perfectly. This by the way is its own game, taking its own look and style, which also includes the crazy cool Olympic mode, where you get to play mini games based on SNK and Capcom franchises to gain new special attacks for your characters. The Metal Slug Alien Blast Band the ghosts and goblins treasure stealing, and many many more. I just love it. This is an essential game for the pocket that always brings a massive smile to my face every time I play it. And before we check out our number one, let's just check out a few honorable mentions that just didn't make the cut. So the first one up is Cotton, this wacky side scrolling shoot 'em up if you've never played anything from the series before. It's kind of a cute 'em up almost. 
It's got a lot of like cutscenes, just like it's Big Brother games, a lot of good humor, lots of good shoot 'em up action. The frame rate's a little bit iffy in this game when you play it on the original version. You know, I just had a little bit of issue about putting this in the top 10. I still think it's a pretty good game though. It's a nice addition to the series. It's definitely one to look out for and I'd still recommend it. And next we've got Lost Blade Beyond the Destiny. This is a little bit of a mashup Lost Blade game, taking little elements from the series and mashing it together. This game is extremely cool. I can't believe they managed to, to get the look and even the feel of the game so well in here. It plays really good. It's got that kind of Samurai Showdown kind of vibe, but just a little bit faster and they even managed to get the cutscenes in before each match, which adds all the atmosphere. The story mode is pretty great. Lots of characters. I'm really impressed how they managed to pull this off with two buttons. It's really good. If you like the Lost Blade series, you're really going to like this. It's usually not everybody's cup of tea. I prefer this series and the Samurai Showdown. I'm not saying Samurai Showdown is bad. I love it. But this series always appealed to me a little bit more, so this is a good one. Okay, then over here we got Dark Arms Beast Buster 1999. Guess what year that came out. Anyway, so this is a it's kind of an action RPG. There really isn't any games on the system like this. So if you like action RPGs, then this is pretty much your only choice. The game is very much like a dungeon crawler. You go to the same places over and over and kill, kill more beasts upgrade your weapons, upgrade everything, it's got the RPG element, kind of like taking care of supernatural activities in your whole like little map area. It's pretty cool, I like all the little cutscenes, I like the dialogue with characters. The reason it isn't in my top 10 is because um, when I originally played it, I loved the hell out of it, and when I played it now, like doing this retrospective video, it's, it's still a good game, it just didn't quite match up to some of the other stuff I played. There were a few games I never played before in that top 10, so those kind of took the slots. This is still, however, a really good game for uh, an action RPG, so if you like that style of game, you're gonna like it. And next we got Fatal Fury F Contact. This is another beat em up, a really good one. The problem with the Neo Geo Pocket is that it actually has too many good beat em ups. Some of them get a little bit lost in the chaos of all the good versus games. This one, I feel, um, if you like Fatal Fury though, this is going to go to the top of your list. It's really well done, as usual. Whole whack load of roster of characters. Everything plays well, plays really fast. They managed to get almost all the moves down here. Um, it's pretty amazing with two buttons. It's impressive where they did it. I really like it. It's just an example of uh, a system which has too many fighting games. <laughs> you know, before this, uh, before the Neo Geo Pocket, I played fighting games before on handhelds. I never, they never were able to keep my attention for more than a few minutes for whatever reason. But uh, these Neo Geo ones, they just, uh, they just done so well. I just played them to, <laughs> I played them to death. Anyway, this is another great example. Another one you should check out if you like the Fatal Fury series. And the last honorable mention game here is Samurai Showdown 2. I know, another fighting game. I really try not to do this, but uh, like I said earlier, the Neo Geo Pocket was packed full of these great fighting games, which is super rare for this kind of system. Even though I like the Last Blade series a little bit more than this, this is still excellent. It's got that same feel, exactly. They managed to get the feel just right where it's uh, very slow and tactical, but each hit is like, super important. The slower pace of the gameplay, I think, makes it pretty different from the other fighting games on this list. So this, again, is a game that's worth checking out. I've even left fighting games off this list, like Gal Fighters. There's just too many. Samurai Showdown's another pretty good example of a great game on the system. And now that all the honorable mentions are out of the way, let's go to our number one game. SNK vs Capcom Card Fighters Clash, which was released by SNK in 1999. This game is a collectible card game RPG hybrid, much like the Pokemon franchise. But for me, this is just way better. The combination of 240 characters from SNK and Capcom franchises, and the tons of cards to collect, use, and all the inside jokes all over the place. Like, you want to play a game of cards against Shinji Mikami, the creator of Resident Evil, at the Resident Evil Mansion? <laughs> Well, here's your chance. It's just so much fun. Addictive gameplay that lends itself so well to the handheld format. If you're not a fan of card games, don't worry. The gameplay is real simple and easy to get into, yet the strategy is really deep the more cards and moves you get. Two versions of this game are available. 
One starting you off with an SNK flavored deck and the other a Capcom. It's basically the same game, so either one is worth getting. It's just a pity we never got to see the Japan only sequel again. But maybe somebody will do a fan translation if it doesn't exist already. Great characters and dialogue, awesome RPG mechanics and world, inside jokes, top tier gameplay with excellent music from both companies' backlogs, and you have my personal favorite, Neo Geo Pocket Color game that I just couldn't do without. Okay, so what is my overall impressions of the Neo Geo Color Pocket? I'd say it's excellent. The selection of games is really extremely impressive. Uh, the top 10 there you just saw, great bunch of games, excellent handheld stuff. The system is also pretty cheap to collect for. Just pick up an import version, a Japanese one like I have here. The Japanese games are really cheap as well if you find them on eBay or whatever. Most of them are arcade centric so you don't need English text. If you're gonna go for English versions of these games, they're a little bit pricey. The RPGs especially, the other games are average. So, you know, you can actually get a substantial collection of this going and like I said before, it's not a massive library. If you like Neo Geo and you like handhelds, then this is going to definitely be for you. And thanks for joining me, Bassish B at 64K. If you could like and subscribe, that would be greatly appreciated. And I'll see you next time. Cheers!